Hi, and welcome to the third video in Ancient Number Systems. Today we're going to look at the Babylonian number system. By the end of this video you should be able to read and write the Babylonian numerals, and now that you've finished all three, you should gain a knowledge of the other number systems and have an appreciation for the one that we use. So let's have a look. The Babylonian number system seems simple at first. It only uses two symbols, a down arrow for one and a left arrow for ten. The number system was used from about 1750 BC, so around about the times of the ancient Egyptians. The symbols were written in clay tablets and left in the sun to dry and harden. Now their system was sexagesimal, which means that it was based on the number 60. But what exactly does that mean? So I want to go through an example with you. This is the number 123. Our system is the base 10 system because it uses place value which goes up like powers of 10s. The first column is your 1s, the second column are your 10s, then your 100s, and then so on. Every time you go up a place value from right to left, you multiply by 10. This is their number system. Still using our digits, they do start with a 1s in the smallest value column, but then it jumps to the 60s. That's sexagesimal, base 60. When we go up the next power, we get to the 3600. So every number in this place value is worth 3600. Every time you go up a place value, you're multiplying by 60. Now they used the number 60 because it was such a great number for factoring, for dividing. 60 has so many different numbers that go into it, but 10, the one that we use, only has a few. We'll talk more about this in class. This, this number 1 represents 3600s. So the number 123, even though we're using our digits, would be 13600, two 60s, and three ones. If we put all of that together, this number represents 3723. We're going to have a look at some examples to make that clearer. Let's go back to our base system for a second and look at how we count. Going up by ones, when we get to the number 9, we automatically jump and put a 1 in the tens column. We also put a zero in the ones column to show that we don't have any ones. This one represents one ten. If we continue to count, our numbers go all the way up to another nine in the ones column, and then we add one to the number next to it in the tens column. That's our number system that we're comfortable with. Let's have a look at their base 60 system. It's similar to start off with, but then it gets a little bit weird. So they count by ones going up to nine, but when they hit nine, they stay in the ones column. They use 10 ones, or the symbol for 10 in their number system, which is a left arrow. Continuing to count up, they go up by ones. I'm going to jump a little bit here. We're going to jump to 57, I reckon. Uh, and then we're going to see what happens when we get to 59. Now, when we get to nine, we put a one in the tens column. When they get to 59, they also put a one, but this one represents 60. They didn't have a symbol for zero for a very long time. So this one in the 60s column, without anything in the ones column, was quite confusing. This meant 60. Now, they didn't use digits like we use, they used down arrows and left arrows. It was because of the instruments that they used. So this down arrow in the 60s column represented 60. By putting a one in the ones column as well, that was 61. 62, 63. Now instead of continuing on with a line, they put their next number underneath to save some room. That's 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. Now because they had a symbol for 10, when you add one more to that number, they put a 10 in the ones column. It does sound kind of confusing, but have a look at these examples that we're about to come up to. I think it's about time we pause the video and summarize what we have. Make sure that you get the symbols down. Don't worry too much about how the arrows are drawn. A simple down arrow and left arrow, the way that I've drawn on the screen right now, is plenty. Alright, let's look at some examples. It was a little bit quick, you can go back and pause that if you want. Question A, we're going to write these numbers using the Babylonian number system, so only using down arrows and left arrows. 43 had four tens, so we would need to have four left arrows. Three ones are three down arrows, and it's as simple as that to start off with. Question B is a little bit trickier. We're trying to write 121. 
Now we have to know how many times 60 goes into 121, which might be confusing, but with these questions that we're going to ask you, we're not going to go too big. Now 121, that's two 60s. So I need to put two ones in the 60s column. Then I need to put a one in the ones column so that we can have something separate. Now let's have a look. Those two ones that I started off with are separated from the other one. That makes it more obvious that those first two ones are in the 60s column and the next one is in the ones column. All right, let's look at question C. I just want to represent the number one. Now I've done C and D to make a point. To show number one, I just need a down arrow in the ones column. Simple. To show the number 60, I need to put a one in the 60s column, which looks exactly the same as number one. And this is why this system was a bit confusing. They did bring in some symbols for zero later on, but until then it was quite confusing. I think it's time that we should summarize what's on the screen. Write down some examples for yourself or even use the ones that I've got there. We'll look at more in class. Now we need to go back the other way. The Babylonian numerals that we have here, we need to write in our own number system. So let's start with question A. This whole, these whole symbols are all together, so we don't have to worry about position or, or the, the ones column and the sixties column. We have three left arrows which represents 30, and we have one down arrow which represents 1. This is the number 31. For B, we notice that the symbols are separate. This first down arrow represents 60, and this second rep arrow represents 1. Because they're separated, they mean 61. For question C, we also see that they are separate. This is a 10 in the 60s column. This represents 10 lots of 60, or 10 60s. That's 600. These two ones represent 2. So when we put that together, we get the number 602. Time to summarize again. Write down some of these examples. Again, you can make up your own, and I'm happy to check them in class. And that's it. We're at the end of the three videos for the first lesson. I hope you can read and write using these Babylonian numerals after this video, but I also hope that you've gained some knowledge and understanding of some of the other number systems that have been used in the past and have some appreciation for the one that we use today. Thanks for listening.